and welcome to the hands-on for reducing time slices. So before I show you how to reduce time slices, let's have a look at them. I'm going to be using the Kenya Least Cost Sand version. You can find this file on Zenodo. So when we talk about time slices, essentially what we're talking about is the year split. So I'm going to show you the year split. Let's select all over here and then unselect. Scroll down to the bottom and we choose year split. So the year split values you can see over here have been defined for all 96 time slices. Now. To define them for 96 time slices, the purpose of that is that the model will take into account all the small aspects that vary within the day in terms of energy production, so for renewable technologies, and also for demand. So essentially having this many time slices gives precision to the model, in the sense that the model accounts for variations of demand throughout the hours and variations of production of energy from renewable technologies. Having said that, to use 96 time slices, it is ideal to use this many when the data is very clear or when you want to get very clear results. Otherwise, you could use less time slices when modeling. This will reduce the precision of the output that you get, however, it will make your model run much, much quicker. So from the year split values that are defined over here for the 96 time slices, there's two things that are dependent on the number of time slices that you have defined. That's the capacity factors of technologies and that is the specified demand profile. So if we have a look at the specified demand profile first. Now for the specified demand profile, in this model, the demand has been defined for residential electricity, industrial electricity, and commercial electricity. So if we look at this data over here, and um, we understand how the time slices work, so in the sense, the way the time slices have been defined here, you can see how that's been done in lecture 3 of the OU Osmosis and Flexible course, and hands-on 3. But essentially, the first five, the first six time slices describe daytime in a certain season, the 12th that follow is nighttime, and the 6th that follow is daytime again. Now we can see over here that in reality, the value is the same. So there is not much difference in the way that, let's say, this time slice has been defined in comparison with the next one. So let's say if this is defined for a certain number of hours, this number of hours for S101 and S102 is practically the same definition, as you can see in the value. So how much does this add to the actual model? Well, not that much. And this is the reason why you can reduce the number of time slices when you have data as such that is not, let's say, very precise. Now, if we have a look at the capacity factors, we will find a very similar story over there. So to look at that, we select all. We come over here, unselect this, and then we select capacity factor. And for technologies, let's select some sort of power plant. So let's scroll down until we find something that's a power plant. So for example, let's select a coal power plant. Now we can see that due to the data that's been used to create this model, the capacity factor is the same throughout every single season and it doesn't vary, right? Now let's have a look at the uh, technology that is much more variable in its capacity factor, so some sort of uh, renewable technology. So let's say, for example, a solar power plant. 
Now we can see that this varies a lot more, right, in comparison to the coal power plant. But even then, from time slices S107 to S118, the actual capacity factor value is the same. So this doesn't really add much detail into the model. If one had much more precise data to say in S106 time slice, actually the capacity factor was let's say 0.4 and the next day it's actually 0.3 and so on and so forth, then there would be much more sense to use this. Now you're welcome to keep 96 time slices as much as you want, but I just want to show you why it's not necessarily needed. So what we can do in this case, since the data has been defined like this, is reduce the number of time slices. So the number that you can reduce it to depends up to you. So they can be reduced from 96 down to 1 and anything in between. When you're building your own model, from the data that you have and from the specifics of your country, so for example from the seasons, from uh, the demand profile and from other such factors, you are free to decide how you want to define the number of time slices that you have. However, in this model we will simply show you how to reduce it down to 8 so that there is one time slice accounting for season 1 night time, one time slice accounting for season 1 daytime, and the same for four time slices. So then essentially we have four seasons, one daytime and one night time. So to do that there has been already an excel sheet that is provided for you. This excel sheet you can find in the hands-on PDF that has, that has the link to this video. It says download this Excel sheet or it has a blue icon over there. So I'm sure you can find it there. The Excel sheet is this one. It's called Osmosis Reducing Time Slice. So if we open this up. Now, over here there is 96 time slices which has a year split values, capacity factors and specified demand profile. So this is like a standard model. For the specified demand profile, the, they have been defined for industrial electricity, commercial electricity, and residential electricity. However, in your model, you could have just defined your specified demand profile for ELC003, so electricity after transmission. If that's the case and that's what you've used, just replace, let's say, industrial electricity with ELC003 and you will use this row below it. I'll explain that in a second. And over here, we have eight time slices. So this is how the picture looks. Season 1 night, season 1 day, season 2 night, season 2 day. And these are the values for it. Now, this Excel sheet has already calculated the year split values for 8 time slices. So for 96 it was 1 over 96 and here it's 1 over 8. That's how you calculate the year split values. If you do not understand this, refer to hands-on 3 and lecture 3. Then the Excel sheet has been set up to calculate the capacity factors from a 96 time slice model. So the values have already been, the formula has already been given. Then essentially to calculate this number, what you would need to do is plug in a number over here and the calculation will be done on this side. If you have more technologies than this, just reuse the same row. And same goes for specified demand profile. There's already the formula existing based on the 96 time slices so you would paste the value over there and then calculate it for that. Now one thing to pay attention on is that the capacity factors are calculated from an average and the specified demand profile from a sum. Why this is the case? Please refer to the hands-on for this exercise and you will understand why that's the case. Make sure that you understand this thoroughly if you want to make your model with time slices less than 96 but not 8. So let's say for example 40. Once you understand that you will be able to do it on your own. <coughs> so let's say now that I want to take the Kenya model and I want to convert this from 96 time slices into 8. What I do first of all is I'm going to change the year split value. So I come over here I select all, I select all, I select year split, press on OK, and here I have the year split values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on this, on the, the other spreadsheet, I'm going to copy these eight values, so control C, no, just did something wrong, cancel, 
let's copy this again control C let's go to the Canyon model then I come over here I paste it over here I control C control shift right arrow control V and then what I do is I put all of the other time slices that have been defined as zero so the model does not run them and does not take into account of them so let's go control shift bottom arrow control V control shift right arrow control V and I save this so now the time slices have been defined for only 8 and not 96 so the model will only take into account 8 time slices then let's say I want to change the capacity factor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select over here I'm going to unselect year split first and then I will select capacity factor that's okay and for technology let's do this for a solar power plant so we scroll down until we find the solar power plant there we go press ok okay so the capacity factor has been defined over here so what I'm gonna do is control shift bottom arrow control C I'm gonna go on the other spreadsheet and there is a power soul over here so I'm just gonna paste the values paste and by the way the values I'm using over here well the values that are over here are for the Kenya model that's why you don't see any change in the numbers so once I've done this then I come onto the other side I find power soul there we go I copy the I copy these values I go back onto the Kenya file scroll to the top I paste them over here paste again control C control shift right arrow control V and all the other values I put as zero so control C control shift bottom arrow V control shift right arrow control V and I save and then I need to repeat this step for all the capacity factors of power plants once I've done that then they've been defined to work only on eight time slices the thing that remains in the end after doing this is defining the specified demand profile for the reduced number of time slices so let's select specified demand profile click OK on fuel I'm just going to show you how to do it for residential electricity so click on residential electricity ok so I copy the values control shift bottom arrow control C I go back onto the spreadsheet and over here I paste them so now the calculations have been done on the other side so I come over here I select these values I control C I come back onto the Kenya spreadsheet scroll to the top right right click and paste these values control C control shift right arrow control V and everything else I change to zero control C control shift right arrow control V control C control shift bottom arrow control V there we go and I will repeat this for industrial electricity and commercial electricity so you can use that spreadsheet in order to make your model run quicker by reducing the number of time slices from 96 to 8 however be aware that do this only if you want to just make it run quicker and be advised that you're going to use lose a lot of detail to find the perfect number of time slices for your model that you're building please refer to the lecture so lecture 3 and hands-on free and otherwise you will understand how it works and just to show you on this file there is also on the right these graphs that you will find and these graphs essentially show you what is the difference between using 96 and 8 time slices so if you look at the capacity factors for 96 time slices you can see the sort of shape it produces right 
Same also for the specified demand profile for 96 time slices. And if we compare it to the one of 8 time slices, there is a difference between the two. So you can see that this is taking in much less detail, right? However, having said that, what you can see at the same time is the pattern is more or less the same. So this data is not exactly precise enough in order to use many time slices. It may be the case that it's more or less precise for wind as this is much more, let's say, changing. So this data could need more time slices for wind. However, for all the other technologies, it is more or less the same. You can see the same case for specified demand profile. So this is how you reduce the number of time slices. And please be advised, do this when you want to make your model run quicker, but know that you are going to lose quite a bit of detail. So the best option is in reality to define a right number of time slices for your model. Thank you for watching this video.